Scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm chapter 22. I encourage you to uh, follow along in your own Bibles. You can read the Psalm of David. Hear God's word this morning. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, and you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not you. Scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me and shake their heads. Put to the, your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe at my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a rattling and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count on my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog, and save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen who have rescued me. I will tell you the name, I will tell your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of all the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust. And I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We pray with you. Almighty God, as we open up your word this morning, we ask that you will speak to us. Lord, whatever it is that you want us to hear, you know. You know our struggles and you know the state of our hearts. So speak to us, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit deep inside of us and speak to us at the point of our need. Tune our minds, our ears, and our hearts to know your voice and to tell it apart from all others. Use whatever words I may offer, God, but you speak to us. And we may know and do your will and yours alone. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. The Psalms are a fascinating. This was the worship book 
of the people of Israel. This was their hymnal. This was their slides. This was their prayer book. This was how they cried out to God. There are patterns of reading and praying and singing through the Psalms that go back for thousands of years. As this was the way in which the people would worship their Lord. And it contains the breadth of human emotion. Even in this psalm, we go from the highest heights to the lowest lows. Here, King David is in a bad way. As he begins writing this, he feels forsaken by God. Everything is going wrong. Everything is going to pot. Everything has fallen apart. You ever been there? You ever been at your lowest point? You ever felt like God was millions of miles away? David was there. And yet, he comes back to knowing that who God is, is one who will never abandon him. He remembers that God is holy. And that when his ancestors trusted in God, they were saved. And so he cries out to him. He doesn't believe he's worth it. But yet he knows that God has been intimately involved in his life from the very beginning of life itself. And so he gives thanks to God for all that he has done. This is one of the prayers of God's people. This was an act of worship to God to cry out from the lowest place, from the depths of despair, and to call on the God whom we know. Even if we can't see it in the moment, we know is with us. That was the kind of faith that David had, that even when everything was going wrong, and he went through several seasons of life where things were going horribly, horribly wrong. Whether it be that the king that he served as a musician and soldier was repeatedly trying to kill him, whether it be that his own family was rebelling against him, he knew from the deepest depths that God was with him. Now, if there's any reason that many people know this psalm, it's because this isn't the last time in the scripture that we hear these words. Matthew chapter 24, starting in verse 45, Jesus is on the cross. He has been beaten. He has been whipped. He has been stripped. He has been run through a mock trial. He has been scorned by his enemies. And in verse 45, it says, from noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There are many who have wrestled with this over time. How can God forsake God? This is the Son of God. This is God himself. This is one person of the Trinity. How can he be forsaken by God? And we know that God could not be in the presence of sin. And we know that the sins of the world were upon Jesus. And yet, maybe there's something more going on here. Because this is still God on the cross. And so as he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Perhaps it is that he's calling attention back to this song. To say that even though this seems like the darkest hour and indeed all of the signs were there to say that it was. Much like his ancestor David, his enemies had surrounded him. 
He was on death's doorstep. They were mocking him, saying to him, he could save others. Why can't he save himself? And not to put too fine a point on it. Several verses earlier, in verse 35, when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots, just as Psalm 22 had said. This wasn't just a hymn, it was a prophecy of what was to come. And yet through this, this was not a sign that the Son of God had been abandoned to his fate, but rather that God's salvation was at hand. That the one who had delivered Israel from slavery to Egypt was delivering us from slavery to sin and death, and we were not forsaken. We were not abandoned by the God we had rebelled against. For he had taken our sins upon himself. This is the same God that calls to you today. That has worked for millennia to save you. To save each and every one of us from bondage, from sin, from eternal death. You know it. This is the Savior that loves you so much that he could not let, excuse me, could not let the just punishment for your sin be carried out, but instead took it on himself. So that justice would be fulfilled, but love would be known. Know him as your Savior. Know him as your Lord. Know that no matter what you are going through right now, he has not abandoned you. You may not be able to feel him right now. You may have done some things to put some distance between you and him. You may have turned your back on him. But all you have to do is repent and turn back, and he's right there waiting. He is not forsaken you. His salvation is at hand. Will you accept it? If you've never known that saving power for yourself, today is the day. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Repent of your sins. Seek to live a life of holiness for Him. Confess and know that He has died for you and risen again from the dead for you. Follow Him with your whole life. Receive Him in your heart. And you will be saved. We're getting ready to take communion in a few minutes, and I encourage you after we pray and after we uh, receive the sacrament, if you want to receive Christ for yourself, or maybe you need to reconnect with him. Maybe you've been a follower of his for a long time, but you have gotten off track. Take some time. Come, kneel, pray. If you want me to pray with you, just lift up your hand a little bit. Receive the Lord. Know Him for yourself. We pray with you. Almighty God, we don't always do what we should. In fact, we're very good at doing what we should. We forget you, but you never forget us. We forsake you, but you have never forsaken us. We fail you, but you have never failed us. Forgive us for we have fallen short of your holy standard time and time. For we have failed to be obedient to you as individuals and as a body. Forgive us for where we have not done your will and broken your law. Where we have rebelled against your love and not heard the cry of the Forgive us and free us for joyful obedience to you. Through Christ our Lord. Take a moment now to pray to the Lord silently. Seek Him. Let, ask Him to show you anything in you that is rebellious against Him, that is sinned against Him, that is not pleasing to Him. And seek His forgiveness. Do that now.
good news. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. On the night when she gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. When he had broken, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, broken for you. And whenever you eat this, remember me. In the same way, after the meal was over, he took the cup. And we give it thanks to his Father. He blessed it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. And forgive your sins whenever you drink this. Remember me. So, my God, as we come together this morning, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Let them be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Even as you make us into his body, redeemed by his blood, sent out to nourish our hungry and fallen world. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. For your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, <coughs> and forevermore. Amen. For those who are assisting with communion, come forward at this time. <coughs> 